computer was a beautiful object, something you want to look at and have in your home. And what if, instead of it being in the right hands, it was in everyone's hands? We'd be talking about the most tectonic shift in the status quo since ever. I have been waiting a very long time to ask you this question. Okay, go ahead. At the Divergent Junket, I asked you a question. I said, was it Danny Boyle or Aaron Sorkin's script that got you involved in this project? And you said, it's a great story, but I'll tell you at the Junket. Ha <laughs> hmm. ha! And, and now we're at the Junket, so what is the story? So the story is... Um, and you said I, it was a really good one. It is a really good one. Okay. So the story is, when I was filming The Dressmaker um, in Melbourne, Australia, the woman who was doing the hair and makeup on that film is a woman named Ivana Primorak, who I have been fortunate enough to work with several times since The Reader. And we were chit-chatting one day, and she, uh, we were talking about what she was doing next, and she said, well, actually, it's really exciting because I've had a couple of emails this week, and Danny Boyle, I think, wants me to do the Steve Jobs film and um, do the hair and makeup design. So that's, you know, it's great. And I'll go straight from here probably to San Francisco and start that. I said, God, that's fast turner. I said, yeah, well, you know, logistics and my mom's not gonna Anyway, so chit chat chit. And then I said, well, what's it about? I said, oh God, a brilliant script. You know, it's written in three acts. It's so clever. And each act is a different period in time. And well, who's playing Steve Jobs? Well, looks like it's gonna be Michael Fassbender. So this goes on for a couple of days and I'm like getting the latest installment when I turn up at work each morning. And then one morning I came in and I said, What's the girl's part? And she went, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. Okay, okay, oh my God, we've got to get you the script. So we'll just give me yours. She said, no, I can't. It's in this encrypted file. I can't show it to anybody. I'm going, right. So I then set off on a mission to just get myself the script. And I sort of thought, I wonder why they're not that willing to share with me. Perhaps they just don't think I look anything like this woman. Perhaps they really can't imagine me playing this part. I had a quick Google to see what she looked like. I look absolutely nothing like her, nothing like her at all. She's Eastern European. She's a lot shorter than me. Uh, and she has very short, dark hair. So I got a short, dark haired wig, which my husband kindly went to a wig shop and bought for the purpose of doing this. We put it on my head, took all the makeup off. I took a photograph of myself and I sent it in the right direction. And I think I just was timely about this move. Um, throwing my hat in the ring in that moment seemed to work because I was then sent the script myself. Could not believe how brilliant it was. Could not believe that Danny Boyle was gonna come to Melbourne and meet me and we sat down and had a wonderful meeting and he asked me to play the role. So that's the story. That's awesome. Yeah, I love that story. It was worth it. It was so worth it, God, <laughs> it, really it was, was so worth I've it. I've been yes. waiting a long time. Um, I wanna ask you about memorable moments from filming. Was there a day or two that you'll always remember from making this? I honestly, I remember every single day and I can remember all the dialogue as well. Um, I think real standout moments for sure were probably one of the earliest scenes between Michael and I um, in act one, where we leave the stage, we need to get the voice demo to work again. We go off stage, we go up a spiral staircase, along a long corridor into a dressing room, back out of a dressing room. It was a nine and a half minute take. And we shot that during our first week of filming. And we were both like, wow, okay, okay. There'll be no nights of heavy drinking for us on this <laughs> film. Um, and we just, every day, it was a challenge. Every day we had to concentrate more and more intensely. And, um, you know, it, it, it really was a gigantic acting um, extravaganza. I mean, we were constantly switched on. Uh, we could never really leave the set. You know, we just had to be so focused. And even when we weren't actually rolling the camera. There was always stuff going on and I very much felt that it was my job to be a little bit telepathic in terms of what Danny was doing. You know, I'd see him setting up the cameras and I'd think, okay, there's one there, there's one there, there's one there. Okay, we're gonna do this all in one. And I'd go back to the actors and I'd say, right, I've just been on set and there are four cameras rigged up. So I think we're all gonna be in this first take and it's gonna run the whole thing from start to finish. And everyone would go, oh shit, <laughs> quickly made sure they knew their lines. Um, but it was very much a team effort. And that tone was genuinely set by Danny because in the rehearsal room he really had all the actors there most of the time and 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 what happens when you do that is you pull all the actors together and you make us make everyone feel really equal and very comfortable and ultimately confident which was very much I think probably part of his plan so that we all felt that we could take ownership of our roles and and and, and play them the way that we wanted to you're issuing contradictory instructions you're insubordinate you make people miserable. The board believes you're no longer necessary to this company. I sat in a garage and invented the future. Because artists lead and hacks ask for a show of hands. 